Good morning, America. How are ya? Don't you know I'm your favorite son? I'm the train to go see you on it. And I'm going my five miles of the day is done. Hey guys. Uh, I'm back. Back in America. And out for my morning walk. Even though it's quite, quite early here. It's about 6.30. And it's pretty chilly. <coughs> Surprisingly so. Yeah, we are on the grounds of the National Cathedral. And we're going to walk down Embassy Row. Past all the embassies. And make our way to the White House. And then maybe over to the Lincoln Memorial. Hey, how's it going? And then... We'll go back up through home. If we get bored, we'll get a scooter. Yeah. So you're here at the National Cathedral. This is an Episcopalian church. That's Church of England to most people in the world. And it is one of the grandest buildings in Washington, D.C. And it is sunrise right now. The sun is coming up over to the west, to the east, which is behind this building. That's why it's so shady here. We'll get some really good views of the sun hitting the side of the building in just a second. So I just got back from three weeks in Scandinavia. I've been in Denmark, Sweden, and Norway for the last three weeks. And I am adjusting, adjusting back to life in America again. It was one year ago this month that I moved from Hong Kong to the United States. And the reverse culture shock is still ongoing. And I just got a reminder of that reverse culture shock when I came back last night from the airport. And uh, landing at Washington, well, landing at any American airport compared to, say, landing at Hong Kong or Singapore is, well, quite a, quite a come down. <laughs> quite a depressing thing. It has been a fast year. Wife and I were remarking about that last night. Kids were remarking, it's like, you know, kids, one year ago, we were in the Pokemon Center in Tokyo on our way back to the United States. And they're just like, what? That was a year ago? So, quite an adjustment. There's a bunch of runners up here. Back here is all the, uh, all the damage from the earthquake. These are all the facades and grotesques and gargoyles and whatnot that are being repaired. Let's get this class. Where is this? This is Washington, D.C.'s National Cathedral. This is the National Cathedral for the Episcopalian Church, which is the Church of England. As such, the Queen of England is the patron or the titular head of this church. In fact, she came here to dedicate and consecrate uh, part of this church when it was opened. It took almost 80 years to build this church, 80 years of construction. Oh, wow, that's pretty. Let's go around and get a better view of the sun coming up over the building, yeah? Go around this big, whatever tree that is, it's not an oak. San Francisco, this is Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. The funeral for John McCain, the funeral for George Bush. The opening prayers for the new presidents are all said in this cathedral. It's also where my kids go to school. My kids go to a school here at the cathedral. I tell you, actually, the sun, hey, how's it going? The sunrise is actually a lot prettier on the periscope camera. It's a lot more orange than it is in real life. I'm looking at it with the naked eye, and it's, it's kind of white. But you guys, I don't know, periscope's camera is giving you that little orange hue, that little orange tint of the sunrise that I don't really see. It's kind of funny to look at it like both ways, yeah? Should see the other towers from here. No, we can't see them because the building's too far in the way. All right, there's your screenshot. So, where's our next stop? 
this path. Bye. All right, so we're going to go down this path now, and we're going to walk over to the vice president's house. And we're going to start all the embassies. So we're going to walk down Embassy Row, home of the majority of the embassies and consulates of foreign governments. The flight was fine for me. It was very, very rough for my son, who is easily airsick. He spent the first four hours hanging with me, chatting, playing video games, la la la. Then we switched and his mother sat with him and she took away the video games. And for the next four hours, he threw up. I mean, threw up badly. I think we went through eight airsick bags, eight airsick bags. Um, we got off the plane. I had to almost physically carry him off the plane. It, I will say this. It was, a, it was a very, there was a lot of turbulence on final approach. It was actually pretty rough. Um, I'm not, I don't get airsick anymore. My kids do. My wife does. So uh, when we got off the plane, the airline actually gave him a wheelchair assist, which was cool because it got us into the wheelchair line instead of the big mass entrance line, which was just a nightmare at immigration. So, you know, little good, little bad. <laughs> we flew on SAS, which is kind of a cheap airline. Uh, they don't really have a lot of stuff. I mean, they're like, oh, we don't have a lot of ice. I'm like, oh, God, what, what kind of airline doesn't have a lot of ice, you know? And uh, the meal was, you know, airplane food. I, I didn't even eat the breakfast. The breakfast was an insult. I would have been more filled with a bagel. I mean, seriously, just go buy some bagels and give everybody a bagel. Oh, I've actually watched most of the movies I wanted to watch on the way over, but I, I downloaded two movies. So I downloaded The Giver, and we watched that with my son because he and I have both read that book for his summer reading assignment for school. So we both read The Giver, and then we watched the movie, which is quite a bit different than the book. And then I watched the documentary Apollo 11, which was just awesome, just an awesome, awesome that's all the new footage from the Apollo 11 moon mission recut into a modern documentary. We did not go business. We went on cattle because we never, we've never really flown SAS. I mean, it is a partner with United, but it was only an eight hour flight. I mean, it's just like, pff, whatever, it's a puddle hop, you know? So wasting our miles on an eight hour flight didn't make sense when, you know, we normally and routinely do 16 hour flights. So we went economy that way we can use our miles for like business when we go back to Hong Kong sometime, maybe later this year, we'll see. So one other weird observation. So we walked into our apartment last night and I have to say it was like cold and emotionless. Going back to Hong Kong, it was always just kind of exciting. You know, when I landed in Hong Kong, I always felt like this great relief, this great sense of I'm home, yeah? And we'd get back to our apartment, our nanny would be waiting for us, and she would like take the laundry, she'd have food ready for the kids. It would just be like, ah, everything is fine, you know? I, I just felt like so, like, like home, like safe. Came back last night, of course we have no nanny here, Done house is, doesn't really have any feeling to our apartment. It's just kind of like, ugh, we're back here. It's just like another hotel room. So we did the laundry and, you know, I went to bed. I actually slept a lot. I got up at, so I went to bed at 8 local time and I got up at 5.30. So I don't know what that is. That's like 10 hours of sleep almost. Um, I guess I was tired. Oh, there's a bunny rabbit. Guys, there's a bunny rabbit. He's right in front of me. Hello, little bunny. I'm not a wolf. Oh, there's two bunnies. Two bunny rabbits. Oh, he saw me. If I walk slowly, can I get past the bunnies without them hopping? Nope. All right, I'm just going to walk normal. Hippity, hoppity, hippity, hoppity. Scared them. They're so skittish, bunny rabbits. So one went under the car and one went back here somewhere. 
where he got eaten by a rat. Tried to get past them without them jumping, but it's really hard to do. They're very skittish. Pretty common in this neighborhood for some reason. I was in Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. So I spent three weeks in Scandinavia. And we just got back last night. So yesterday morning I was in Oslo, and today I'm here. Feels kind of weird. No, I don't think rabbits are introduced here. What did I do there? So we took a tour. We landed in Copenhagen, and then we did a like a four or five day tour of Denmark. A couple days in Copenhagen, then we went out to the west side of Denmark, and we went to a little town called Reeb, which is like the oldest town in Denmark. And then we drove up the west coast of Denmark along the North Sea, and we went to this place that had a museum about the Battle of Jutland which was kind of cool because the kids are learning about Jutland. Then we went over to our house and we visited this very trendy art museum, which was kind of fun. And then we went down to Legoland. Belund, the world headquarters of Lego, is in Denmark. And so we went there. Kids were ecstatic. Back to Copenhagen, grabbed the train up to Gothenburg for a 10-day soccer tournament with our friends from Hong Kong. So all of our teammates from Hong Kong came over met up with them that was just a blast it's good to see those faces kids kids really had fun seeing their friends again there was just a a familiarity and whatnot and we were just hanging out with them then after that we went up to sweden for four days we went down into a fjord we went and saw the fort at oscarburg which is kind of like the alamo in uh, american history oscarsburg stopped for at least 24 hours a German invasion in World War II, and as a result, the king and the government were able to escape and set up a government in exile rather than forced into capitulation to the Germans. So it's really quite a historic place. Uh, then we went to the Nobel Peace Prize Museum. The Nobel Peace Prize is given out in Oslo every year. It's very inspiring for the kids to see all those people. Toured around the palace. We went inside the Norwegian Royal Palace and I visited uh, the fort across the harbor and then we pretty much came home yeah so it was a kind of a history tour slash soccer slash vacation life really liked Norway she just felt it was so peaceful and quiet Norway it's funny I talk about Norway because the Norwegian embassy is coming up just here on the left right here uh, this is uh, Oh, is this the Shetlands or something, islands? That's Iraq's embassy over there, back there. It is going to take a while to recover. Now, the interesting thing, and I'm going to actually do some research on this. Since I started dieting about five or six years ago, I've taken several three-week, two- or three-week vacations. And it just occurred to me, I've taken maybe four vacations to the United States in that time and three vacations to Europe. And... I think the three vacations to Europe, I either lost weight or maintained weight, but the four vacations to America, I gained weight. So I'm going to go and do some studying about that. I'm actually, I don't think it was Cape Verde, was it? I really, I think it was one of the islands. You know, it might have been Cape Verde, but I, I thought it was, I thought it was like one of the North Atlantic island nations. I didn't think Cape, I thought Cape Verde is farther down, but we'll see, we'll see. Might have been. This is a fun game if you like flags because we're going to see a bunch of flags and you're going to have to identify them all because some of these I don't know who they are. That, but I think actually it also has something to do with my exercise or lack thereof. So here I am. Look at this. I just flew in from Oslo and look where I am now. I'm back. I'm back in Norway. I just didn't want to leave. So this is the Norwegian embassy. And that's the Queen. That's that Queen Maud? Or that's the current? That looks like Queen Maud. I think that is Queen Maud. I don't know which Queen this is. Crown Princess Martha of Norway. Born in Stockholm to Carl of Denmark. Married 
to the Crown Prince Olaf. Oh no, this is, um, it's not Queen Maud, that's Queen Olaf's wife, the Swede. She's the one. So, I learned a lot about Norwegian nobility, by the way. We'll talk about that in just a second. Oh, there's the vice president's house behind all this secret service. So the vice president of the United States lives on the Naval Observatory. You can't really see, there's a white house back in there. There it is, that white house. That's, that's the vice president's house. Okay, flag people, identify the flag. Have another embassy here. Give you a hint, smallest country in the world. It is chilly in DC. It's actually reminding me of Sweden. Smallest country in the world, the flag is yellow and white, and it has a papal seal on it. Okay, I gave it away. The Vatican, yes. Good call, Mark. Here we go, another one. It's, it's a blue and white cross with a little seal in the middle. It's in the EU. You can see the EU flag there. So it's a white flag with a blue cross and a red seal right in the middle of the cross. I didn't get a chance to get over to this country in my tour of Scandinavia, but I should have because they have the best education system in the world. Anybody, anybody? Finland. So this is the Finland embassy. All right, so now we have a big break before we get down to some bigger embassies. Yeah, Finland, you guys got it. That delay. Now, this next part of the trail past the Rock Creek, so this is the vice president's back there. There are a lot of deer that come up from Rock Creek Park as we walk down this part. The next embassy is so easy that I, I, don't, I shouldn't even show you the flag. You know, you must be like, I don't know that. So I think back to, okay, so back to the royal family of Norway, yeah? So Norway didn't have a king or a royal family after being connected up with Sweden for a hundred some years or so. So the Norwegians decided to select a king and they ended up picking a prince of Denmark to be their king. And so this prince came up, he was married to granddaughter of Queen Victoria. Yeah? So her father was Edward the fifth or whatever, George, whoever. Yeah, let's go. So he got married. So he became the king. And he took on the name Hawken or whatever. King Hawken or whatever. And his son was Olaf. And that was Olaf's wife that we just saw in the statue. And Olaf had a son named Harold, and he had two daughters as well. And Harold is the current king of Norway. So if you watch The King's Choice, which was actually, I won't say it inspired, but it definitely was something we watched before we went to the move just to visit Norway. You can see Prince Olaf and Prince Harold in one little scene where Olaf puts Harold in a car and they were whisked him away uh, to exile. Her sister is Princess of Denmark. Which sister? The uh, uh, Princess Marjorie, or what's her no, it's not old. It's only a couple of years ago. It's actually a good film. I, I, it won the, so it was Finland's, or it was Norway's official entrance into the Academy Awards for Best Foreign Picture. I don't remember if it won Best Foreign Picture, but it was one of the finalists for uh, Best Foreign Film. Uh, it's called The King's Choice. I might get a scooter later. So, um, yeah, it tells the story of the king having to make a choice when the Nazis gave him basically an ultimatum, surrender or be invaded, you know? Olaf was her first cousin, yeah. They're all intertwined, you know? That was, I think that was the thing. So, Hawkins' wife was so connected with, they had the, the Prince of Denmark, so Denmark would be an ally against the Swedes, and then they had the grandchild of Queen Victoria, so England would be an ally against the Swedes, you know? So the Norwegians were very, tactical in picking their uh, future king. So uh, the king's choice, basically the Germans came to invade 
and they ran into this fortress called Oscarsburg Fortress. It's down about 20 miles south of Oslo. And this big super German cruiser, uh, the Bolcher, Boot Bolcher or whatever, comes in with the entire Gestapo and occupying you know, forces inboard. And they pass this fort, and guess what? Whammo! They slam it with 11-inch cannon shells. Boom, boom, boom. And then they hit it with torpedoes. And the vulture just sinks right there in the fjord. All right, killing almost 800 people, I think. So the Germans' attack on Oslo is delayed. Meanwhile, the signal goes out. The king, get out. The Germans are coming. The government, get out. So they rush north. The Germans are hot on their heels, you know. The Royal Guard is fighting these delaying actions against the advancing German troops. And they just keep pushing north, farther north, farther north, to get away from the Germans. Till eventually the SAS comes over from England and rescues the royal family and the government in exile and ships them back to England to set up uh, a formal government in exile, thereby delegitimizing the puppet government that was put in by the Germans. So anyway, the king's choice is about the king's choice. Do I accede to the Germans' demands? Do I become just a vassal state of Nazi Germany or do we fight? And uh, it's a cool movie. It's a really cool movie. The resistance effort in Norway is, is, they're very, very proud of the resistance effort. They're very, very proud that they said no, that they stuck up uh, for their principles when many others didn't. So anyway, The King's Choice. It was a good film. Uh, if you watch some of my periscopes from Oslo, some of it will seem kind of familiar. And we're going to cut across the street now to this next embassy. Now this flag, I think most of you are going to get this flag. I'm not really, not really concerned that you're not going to figure out this flag. I will say, however, there is a former colony of this country back behind there. They have their embassy back there. Now we're not going to see that, but I will say that that embassy, I hope, has really good fish and chips, because you know my favorite of fish and chips. Okay, here we go. All the cars are gone. This guy's gone. He's going in there. Oh, one more's coming. I gotta run fast. All right, so you guys don't really need any guesses on this embassy, yeah? Rule Britannia, Britannia rules the waves. This is the British Embassy. This is one of the largest embassies in Washington, D.C. And it stretches on and on. No Brexit yet because they still have the EU flag flying. But after October, I guess, well, if Boris Johnson has the way, they'll probably chainsaw that flagpole. They still have a British phone booth here, by the way. I think they need a TARDIS, to be honest. A TARDIS would be cool. So that's the British Embassy, and we also have the British diplomatic compound down here where I think the ambassador has a place, or at least some of his assistants can live on base. Something most people don't realize is that when a country opens an embassy in other countries, they oftentimes buy apartments and houses in other countries. The reason is it's just so dang expensive to rent. So, for example, the United States consulate owns some pretty amazing residential properties uh, in the city. The British ambassador, the British consul general to uh, Hong Kong has an amazing house. There are a lot of uh, Teslas in Oslo. I was noticing that. Quite a few Teslas in Norway. Of course, gasoline was what? $8 a gallon? $10 a gallon? It was like, it was like $2 US per liter, I think, is gasoline. So this is the British uh, ambassador's compound. So with prices like that, yeah, you, you, you're going to have some Teslas, kind of like Hong Kong. It's funny, I, I, the other thing I noticed about Norway is that they really like tunnels. There were a lot of tunnels in Norway. There were a lot of tunnels in Oslo. And they just like, hmm, let's dig a tunnel. Okay. And then what? Well, let's connect it to another tunnel. Yeah, that's a good idea. So I drove through, and we went through like a seven kilometer tunnel. I was like, what? Seven kilometer tunnel. We shall never surrender. 
I don't think the British Embassy actually put this up. I think this was like the Friends of Winston Churchill put up this statue here because of all the water, yeah? Yeah, there's lots of fjords and mountains and stuff. So you've got Churchill on one side giving his victory cross, and you've got another guy on the other side with his fist in the air. Now, this flag is probably one of the cooler flags. It's got all different colors. I can't show it to you, though, but I can show you this guy. Yep. Okay, do you need to guess? Yes, that's Nelson Mandela and the South African Embassy. Okay, hey, this flag is kind of hanging, so I might be able to show you this flag of this next embassy. I like the, I like the title, Embassy of the Plurinational State of... And here comes the flags. They have two flags. I don't really know what the flag on the right is for. But I, the flag on the left has got some green, it's got some red, and it's got yellow. So it's a red flag. It's a red stripe with a yellow stripe and a green stripe under there. Yeah, visit your house. Sorry, I missed it. Some nice houses in Oslo. Whoa, that was nice. So you guys pick this one out. Red stripe across the top, yellow in the middle, green. And it is where they make lots of cocaine. The land of cocaine, cocaine. Anyone got it? Bolivia. That was the Bolivian embassy. Now this embassy, if you are a football fan, you know this flag. Green flag, yellow circle, blue circle inside that. Now they actually have two embassies. They have this one and then that one there. Brazil, yes, good call. The Brazilian embassy, I actually call this the Brasilia embassy because it's the modern one and this is the Brazil embassy, it's the old one. Now, these two diplomatic compounds are currently empty. Uh, they were involved in a, in a trade for a draft choice, and their the country to be named later will be assigned or will buy those embassies. These embassy mansions are actually zone diplomatic, so you can't actually buy it if you're not another country. So a lot of the buildings, a lot of the old stately mansions on this street uh, are diplomats only. Some countries don't want to live in this, so they'll move off Embassy Row and they'll build their own building or they'll buy a huge piece of land, tear down the old embassy and build a new one, which is what happened up here on the right. We're going to see that in just a moment when we get to the stoplight up here. Mm. <sighs> I wanted to say that I was like so excited to come back to America and eat certain foods, and the reality is I'm not. I really don't care. Just kind of like, eh, I can eat that. Eh, I can eat that. Eh, I'll eat that. It's not like going back to Hong Kong and I'm like, oh, wontons, woo, pan fried buns, woo, all this. You know, I'm just sort of kind of like, eh, meh. Okay, so I don't know if we're going to see the flag of that monster embassy, NATO member, EU member. Sweden is hot. Yeah, I left before that heat wave was coming across Europe again. I guess France was obscene. I was watching... Uh, a couple of the scopers, Chantel uh, TV and Claire Waddington from Paris and Mock Tarkane, and they were just telling me it was awful. Okay, guys, so we got a green bar with a white bar and a red bar, EU member, green, white, and red, same colors you see at your favorite pizza restaurant, favorite place to have spaghetti, green, white, and red, modern embassy, big, designed like it's like something out of Milan. Oh, did I give it away? Uh, you guys should know that one. Yes, Italy. Good call, Carrie. That's the Italian embassy. Now the embassies are going to start getting fast and furious up here because these are smaller embassies up here, and they come like every block. So we'll go catch some new embassies down on this side of Rock Creek Park. Now up here also you can see a minaret standing above the tower. That is a Muslim uh, mosque. It's not really a mosque. It's sort of a Muslim cultural center, but used as a mosque, basically. And a lot of the uh, Muslim countries, their ambassadors and staff will come over here for worship. Now, right behind the mosque is the KGB, FSB's spy center for the Russians. And next to that 
is Barack Obama's house, and on the other side of the street is Ivanka Trump. So Ivanka Trump lives next to the Russian spy center, and Barack Obama lives next to the mosque. And I'm not joking. <laughs> it's actually true. Weird but true America. So we're over Rock Creek Park right now. Rock Creek Parkway, that's the Rock Creek over there, and that's the parkway over here. This is rated as one of the 10 best drives to take as a supercar in the U.S. Because once you get past all this commuter section, it gets really bendy and turny and pretty uh, farther north. So driving a supercar up there is, well, it's quite fun, quite fun. Not that I've actually driven a supercar up there, but I could dream. All right, so that's the uh, Muslim temple coming up on the left. KGB spy center is back behind it. We can't really see it unless we walk back there. But if we walk back there, the FBI guys who are spying on the Russians who are spying would take a photo of me spying on them, and then my photo would be in, like, every database. So it's just not worth my walking back there right now. Now, this tree really needs to be trimmed. Okay, so this is not an embassy, but this, I believe, is a uh, diplomatic residence up here. I would like a Lamborghini, I think. I think a Lamborghini looks cooler than a Ferrari. I, I'm told they're better to drive. Okay, so here we go. EU member, red and yellow flag. I think it's the only red and yellow flag out there, really. Um, like I said, this is not an embassy. I believe this is a diplomatic residence. Some of the uh, staff here, yes, the Spanish. And I believe this is the, either one of their diplomatic or sort of like one of their cultural centers. That is the mosque over there. The sun's really up there. Oh, there's a flag over there none of you are going to get. I swear, I'm going to get it because I've been there. I've actually been to that embassy before. So a lot of these are residences for uh, diplomatic staff. They're kind of kept low-key, though. Because the security around residences isn't quite the same as the security at the embassy or the consulate. So just being a nondescript apartment building that happens to be filled with diplomats, of course, but it's just safer, yeah. Barack Obama lives at the end of that road down there. There is a Secret Service car waiting to pounce. I don't know if he's going to still live there, though, because, you know, he was staying here for his daughter to finish school. And I think she just finished last summer, last May. So I guess she's moving away to college now. I'm not really sure. So I don't know if he's going to stay here, go back to Chicago. I wonder the bus stops for that stop for him. The problem right now is all the lights, all the lights are timed for commuters coming into the city. So there's, they're just the longest flipping lights ever. Plus, on top of that, you got diplomats driving here. Diplomats don't have to obey the law, basically. So when you have a bunch of diplomats, it's like being around or jaywalk. Like being around a bunch of cars with mainland Chinese license plates. You just don't trust them. Okay, here we go. Back to the flags. This has got two red... This has got a red... Oh, it's a blue flag with a red outline and then a seal in the middle. It's a blue flag with a red outline, a seal in the middle. PC. Anyone? Latin American country? I think it used to be a British territory. I think English is actually the official language of this Latin American country. Not Russians. Blue flag, white symbol, red around the outside. I believe it used to be a British colony. I think they speak English in that place. Any guesses? I have to give it to you. Belize. Yeah, that was Belize. This one's pretty easy. There is a... Uh, yeah, Belize, you got it. It's a red flag with a star and a crescent. Member of NATO, but not technically a member of the EU, though I think they'd like to be. Turkey, yeah, that was an easy one, yeah. 
Let's see what we got here. This is empty. Over there, I don't see a flag yet. I will say on December 7th, 1941, the people in this embassy were very busy destroying all their cipher machines and burning documents. So this embassy, there's the flag. Hint of the colony. Here we go. White flag with a round red, not rising sun, but a red circle inside it. I'm pretty much giving that one away. You guys know that embassy, yeah. That's the Japanese embassy. Yeah, now this one is a tricky one. This is blue with white and green. Blue bar, white bar with some sort of tea kettle inside it and green. Blue, white, and green. I believe it's an African nation. I'm not sure. Let's go through it. Anyone? Blue, white, and green flag. Blue, white, and green with a little tea kettle inside the middle. It's a country from Africa. It starts with an L. Lesotho. There's more of the Japanese embassy back over there. That was Lesotho, L-E-S-O-T-H-O or something like that, Lesotho. Did you go to the White House? Not yet. The White House is, where am I? 2400 block Massachusetts Avenue. White House is another 10 blocks, maybe 12. We'll get there soon enough. We're walking down Embassy Row. I'm Penguin Six. I just came back from a three week vacation in Scandinavia. So I'm out for my morning walk, as I do pretty much every day. Uh, today, we decided to go down Embassy Row over to the White House. From the White House, I might go to the Lincoln Memorial, and then I might just come home. I haven't quite decided. Uh, I may just get a scooter, <laughs> get a scooter and scoot back home if I'm in a hurry. I go for about, this will be a 10,000 step walk, uh, though sometimes I go for 20. Now, this is an ambassador's residence, which is currently unoccupied. I do live in D.C. right now. Uh, this look at the look at the grass. Now this country is currently at odds with the United States. We reckon uh, the flag up there is red, yellow, and blue. Red, yellow, and blue. Country that doesn't like us. We like one government. There's another government that still has the keys to this embassy ambassador's residence. So bit of a debate over who should live in this place. Red. So it's a yellow, flag, yellow bar, then a blue bar, then a red bar. I'll get a better view of the flag over here. No, I can't. So it's a yellow, blue, and red flag, and it's blowing in the wind back there. Country currently at odds with the United States. Petrodollars, Latin American country. Starts with a V. Starts with a V. Venezuela. This is the embassy ambassador's residence of Venezuela. Another Asian country with a circle in the middle of it, but this time with a little bit more stuff on the outside. Can you name the flag? Good morning. That was Venezuela. Good call, Kerry. All right, so this flag, this is an easy one. Black, pink, BTS. Yes, yes, that is South Korea. They've got actually like three embassy buildings down here. Now there's one coming up here I don't think anyone's going to get. I don't even know the flag's out. In fact, I'm not even sure I can remember this one. I wish they did have the flag. Oh, they do have the flag out, so it's going to be a tough one. Guys, it's a dark blue flag. Dark blue flag. It's got a stripe down the middle. It's got a little, like, red and white stripe down the middle. Dark blue flag, red and white stripe down the middle. Most of them are on the Strand Street, yeah? This used to be a possession, slash call, used to be a possession of the United States. In fact, I believe they are in free association with the United States, which means the United States handles their military and foreign affairs, but they still handle their domestic things locally. I'm not really sure. I believe the Marshall Islands. Yeah? This is the Marshall Islands Embassy. We seized the Marshall Islands after World War II. We eventually gave them some sort of limited kind of uh, freedom or whatever about 15, 20 years ago. That was your second guess. Over there, everybody's going to get this flag. Green, white, red. Green, white, and red. One of our nearest neighbors. They don't even need an embassy. They could just commute. This is not their embassy. 
The, yes, um, diplomats live in these houses. Some of them, Mexico. Yes, that is the Mexican. That's not an embassy. The embassy is downtown. This is just a um, residence for some of their ambassador staff or some other stuff. Now, this place doesn't have a flag. Um, this house has Victoria Falls. Victoria Falls in Africa. The Greek one, we're going to go by the Greek one pretty soon. Victoria Falls in Africa. Country starts with a Z. Yeah. Uh, I think that embassy is being renovated right now. Yeah, the construction sign is here. So that's my clue. Victoria Falls starts with a Z. Africa. Had a good run at the African Cup about four years ago in football. Not Zimbabwe. Everybody, everybody always gets those two messed up. This is the shorter one, all right? The shorter name, not Zimbabwe's. Zambia, Zambia, not Zaire. <laughs> There's so many Z countries. This one doesn't have a flag. Oh, well, they do have a flag, and I've already shown you the name. It was Zambia, Zambia. Brazil was back up the street. We saw Brazil just a bit ago. Okay, so we've got an orange and white and green. Orange, white, and green. And before you say Ireland, I will stop you and say, no, this is in Africa. Why are there houses in the USA for these countries? There are diplomats, embassies. Every embassy, every country opens an embassy in other countries to represent uh, their interests, their positions, and to take care of their citizens who need passports, or notaries or whatever. Okay, so this is an African nation, Cote d'Ivoire. Yes, that is the Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire. I don't know which one I'm supposed to call it now. Uh, so let's cut across the street because there's a whole bunch of embassies on the other side of the street you're not going to guess. And then we'll come back to this side of the street because some of you wanted to see a specific embassy on this side of the street. Well, we'll see them all. We're going to walk around Embassy Circle up here, which is like all embassies and stuff. Okay, here we go. So that's the Ivory Coast Cote d'Ivoire. Now this one. Oh God, you're never gonna get this one. You're never gonna get this one. Is the flag up? Yes, the flag's up. Okay, black bar, red bar, green bar. You can go into black bar, red bar, green bar. African nation. Six letters. Starts with an M. African nation. Six letters. Starts with an M. Not Kenya. No, no, close though. Kenya's down the street. Anyone? Malawi. Yeah, I knew that was hard. Mumbai. <laughs> close Morocco, no. Okay, so this is an Arab nation, yeah? And it's got a green, it's got red, green, white, and black. Red, green, white, and black. In fact, I can show you a close up of the color arrangement red, green, white, and black. Red, green, white, and black. There's the Arabic name of this nation. Who can guess this one? Any Arsenal fans out there? Not Qatar. Any Arsenal fans? Where does Arsenal play? Where does Arsenal football play? Come on, you guys got it. Red, green, white, black. Emirates, the United Arab Emirates. This is actually their education affairs office. Ooh, that's a tricky one over there. So look at that's blowing too. So we've got green, we got red, and we got yellow, and we got a yellow star. It is an African nation. Green, red, and yellow with a yellow star. Cameroon, yes it is. That's the Cameroon. Same on their planes. Yeah, their planes are the same color. <laughs> oh man. Uh, you're gonna get bonus points if you get this one here, okay? So this is white red with a little bit of green uh it's sort of in africa white red and green bom, 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 on up. farther south in algeria dun, 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 i like to move it move it i like to move it move it you like to move it move it they like to move it that's the clue that's the clue i like to move it move it is the clue Myers is from Egypt, isn't he? Madagascar. <laughs> Good spelling. I'm going to give you points. I think you, got, I think you were going for Madagascar. I'm just going to give you the autocorrect. That is Madagascar. Uh, this one, we saw another one of their buildings earlier. So you know that one. That just doesn't count. This is another Korean one here. 
Oh, EU nation on the other side of the street. Oh, the flags are at half staff. I wonder why they're at half staff. Now, this is a fun flag. This is one of the best flags. They have the best Olympic uniforms. They have red, white, some red checks and blue. Now, the flags are at half mast. I don't know, somebody must have died in that country or they're still in moaning in mourning from the World Cup. Yes, that is the Croatian embassy. Yes, Croatia. Let's see who's next. And I think this is that now. Oh, ooh, what's this one? Ooh, this one's tough. This one's tough. This is a red one with a yellow circle in the middle. Red. I can see your comment there, yeah. Red with a yellow kind of symbol in the middle there. There is an Irish embassy. It's coming up. I slept like 12 hours last night. Oh, where did the flag go? Passed it. There's the flag. Anyone get this flag? Anyone get this flag? Red with that yellow doohickey. Never seen it before because I think it's a former Soviet Republic. I think it's, it is a former, it's in Cyrillic language, I think. It's Kyrgyzstan. I'm not sure though. Not sure what flag that is. It's a red flag with a yellow sun. It's one of the stands, I think. There we go. There you get a good view of the flag. No, is it Malaysia? It was a Cyrillic writing. Red flag, yellow like gear and sun. I think it's Kyrgyzstan Republic. This one is a mess. This is red and blue stuff. And I'm sorry, I don't know who the hell this is. This is like Bermuda or something. Bermuda does have an embassy. This one always throws me. Now, it's white, and then it looks like it's black, but it might be green, and it's got a crescent moon in it. So if it's green with a crescent moon and some white, really good at cricket, don't like their neighbors. Neighbors don't like them. I believe that's Pakistan. The only thing that throws me is that I keep looking at the flag and I swear to God the flag is black. I mean, just maybe my eyes are really, it looks like it's black. So I keep saying, well, Pakistan is green, yeah? So why is there like a black flag? Or maybe it's just the flag's dirty. Okay, Latin American island nation, known for having horrible earthquakes and famine and destruction, but was the only slave colony or slave state that got their own freedom by revolting against the French. French is the language in that country. Haiti, good call. Okay, for those Arsenal fans who are here, Sanchez. For other soccer fans, Vidal. Had a pretty good run in the Cup of Nations, the Confederate, whatever the cup is down in Latin America. Not Latin America, Central America, South America. This is a South American nation. They had a bunch of guys stuck down in a well. Uh, the other countries have to buy these embassies. They had a bunch of guys who were stuck in a mine. They were dug out. And every time they pulled one of the miners out of that thing, they said, chi, 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 le, 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 chi. Yes, Chile. It's the Chilean embassy. Okay, who do we got coming around the corner here? So other countries, other countries buy these spaces. In fact, some countries that are too poor will like share embassy space. It'll be like in a co-work space with some other embassies because they just can't afford their own embassy. I don't know which one this one is. What do we got here? Oh, somebody was asking, that's, everybody knows that flag, EU member, Olympics. That's not the embassy though. That one's a black one. I don't know which one that is. Greece, yeah. Well, the main Greece embassy is on the other side. And then this is a small one. This is just like an interest section. So what will happen is sometimes one department of the embassy is like no room in the embassy. So they kick them into a separate building. Yeah. So we're going to see the main Greek embassy in just a minute. So like this thing, for example, this is the Korean Cultural Center or something like that. It's not actually of the consulate. Now, a consulate is a place where you go to get like your paperwork sorted out, like a tourist visa and stuff. Oh, here we go. Former Russian, Russian uh, Soviet Union, red, white stripe down the middle, member of the EU, 
generally considered to have the most attractive women in the world. The most beautiful faces in the world come from this country. Yes, Latvia. And it's true, people do generally consider Latvians to be the most beautiful faces in the world. We saw the other part of this embassy earlier is, is a red Taliban attack on their soldiers. Oh, I didn't know about that. This is another red star. This is a red embassy, red flag with a sickle or with a crescent in it. This is Turkey. Oh, this is one I actually deal with. Blue, yellow, red flag. Remember the EU. Blue, yellow, red flag. Southern Europe. Blue, yellow, red. Lots of folk music. Lots of vampires associated with this embassy. Transylvania. Blue, yellow, red. Anyone? Where's Transylvania? Come on, guys. That was Romania. All right, I got to give it to you. Now, this one, they give away free Guinness in this embassy. Anyone who comes in here gets a free bit of Guinness. <laughs> This is the Irish Embassy, Ireland. There you go. We guessed it earlier, but you guys are off. Now over there is the main embassy, Hellas. There is the Olympics. That is the Greek Embassy. You know what? We missed a bunch. We missed a bunch. So we're gonna go. We're just gonna go around the circle because there's a bunch more over here. So this is the Greek Embassy. There's not a lot more down that way. There, the more, most of them are back up in this neighborhood back here. So this is the Greeks. how much the U.S. spends on diplomatic compounds per year. It's going to be in the billions. Maintenance, upkeep. How much does it cost to have embassies in every nation? This is one of the newest embassies because we just... Can the president kick out all the embassies if he wants? The president can revoke diplomatic re relations with a country and would make their ambassadors persona non grata. They would not be welcome here. So if the United States uh, no longer has diplomatic relations with a country like North Korea, uh, we would not have an embassy. We do not have an embassy in North Korea. They do not have an embassy here. That was the case with this embassy for a number of years following a bitter, bitter war between the United States and this country. We did not have diplomatic relations with this country until basically Obama. So it is a red flag with a yellow star. Uh, Robin Williams used to say good morning to this country. Good morning. Yeah, that's right. That's the Vietnamese embassy. Yep, good morning, Vietnam. Now, some of you guys, when I was talking about an African country with a black flag and a red and a white, you guys pulled this one out of your hat. Uh, this is out of Africa. This is lions and tigers. This is what everybody thinks about safaris. Black stripe, red stripe, green stripe, African nation, east side of Africa, starts with a K. Come on, guys, you had this one earlier. Yep, Kenya, good call. This one, oh, this is a red and blue and white, three different triangles. Hey, how's it going? Hey, burps. Yeah, it's Kenya. Now, this one's... Do they all pay real estate taxes? No, these are diplomats. They don't even pay any tax. They don't even pay sales tax. Diplomats don't pay sales tax. So this is a white triangle with a red and a blue and a little yellow sun. This is an Asian country, an island nation, known for being many, many happy people uh, for uh, Amel de Marcos, uh, Puto, Babinka bread, which is really good. Puto, which is this rice cupcake. It's just delicious. You've got to have Puto once in your life. Um, the Philippines. Can the president live in these houses? Um, he'd have to buy it. These are privately owned houses, Laos. Yeah, that's a good guess. Um, uh, these are privately owned. I mean, the countries own these houses. Uh, so uh, the amount of houses they own is usually dealt with by, on a reciprocal basis. So like, if the United States has X hundred square feet in one country, they can have X hundred square feet in this country. What's this one? Do we have a flag? Let's go over here. 
There's a lot of embassies back in here. Ooh, this is a tricky one. Oh, this is going to be hard for you guys. Red, blue flag. Um, God, what can I say about this country? Somewhere, was it a former Soviet state? Might have been uh, known for having gangsters. <laughs> Really, really mean European gangsters. Yeah. That was uh, Vietnam, then we also had the Philippines. And that was Armenia. Oh, this flag. So this is a red, green, yellow, with a thing inside. They could rent it for baby clubs. Now, most Americans don't know this name of this country by its current name. They know it by the name of Burma. But it has a new name. We don't call it Burma anymore. We call it... Starts with an M. Starts with an M. Myanmar. This is a blue and white flag, very common to World Cup fans. Blue and white flag. This is not an embassy, it's just a uh, residence over there. Um, who was it? Maradona's home. River Plate, Boca Juniors. Over there. Had a big fight with the British about 20 years ago over some stupid islands led to their country being basically overthrown. Argentina, yeah, we have some soccer fans. Oh, good luck with this one, guys. White flag with a yellow thingy in the middle. This is an EU member country. White flag, yellow thing in the middle. It is an island, I believe. Kind of at, at battles with many other islands. Cyprus, Costa's got it. I was gonna say, whoever knew where Greece were, they would know where Cyprus is. Now see, this is what the Pakistan flag is supposed to look like. It's white and green. The one over there looks white and black. I don't understand why that other one looks. This is empty right now. Oh, they've got two embassies. Okay, guys, we did this one earlier today. We did this one earlier today. Uh, this must be a secondary building. A lot of you couldn't get this one because it, it, it was an African nation. It's got green. It's got red, black, and orange. I gave you the clue. Victoria Falls. Victoria Falls. Not Angola. But kind of southern Africa. Kind of a little bit to the, little to the east of Angola and up a bit, I think. Starts with a Z. Starts with a Z. Not Kenya. We just saw Kenya. Kenya has black in their flat. More black. That's one. Zim Zimbabwe desire. You guys are going to pick all the wrong ones again. Not Zimbabwe. Starts with a Z. Zambia. There we go. Gaffer got it. Zambia. That's with Zambia. Look at this guy. <laughs> they, still blame, they still claim this. Alberto Santos de Mont. First to fly an aircraft heavier than air by its own means of propulsion. Wright brothers? No. The Wright brothers didn't exist to people from Brazil. He was the first man to make an airplane, if you're a Brazilian. They don't believe in the Wright brothers. There's another blue and white flag. We've already seen one of their buildings. They're kind of spread out everywhere. So a lot of the places back here, now see diplomatic plates. Oh, TQ. They don't have their flag up though. So you can also identify embassies and their vehicles by their license plates. Diplomatic license plates have a special two letter code. That was TQ. If you go on the internet and you type diplomatic license plate codes, you can find out who is DTQ. I can tell you who TQ is. It's Tanzania. Now this is a green and a yellow and a red. African nation. Currently has French peacekeepers in their nation trying to maintain the peace. So green, yellow, and red. It's a big nation. It's kind of uh, north of uh, Nigeria, not Chad. Um, they've had a lot of Islamic activity in there. Uh, it's a four-letter word, four-letter word, like Chad, but it's not Chad. Four-letter word starts with an M. Somalia, no, 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 not Algeria either. 
starts with an M, four letters, ends in a vowel. Let's go this way. Maya? Oh, I think I think you know what you're saying. I think I think autocorrect just messed you up, Burks. Uh, Mali, there we go. Angel for good. Mali, yes, that was the Malayan embassy. Mali currently has French peacekeepers fighting a battle against uh, extremists in their nation. And it is a very big country. Okay, so I tell you guys, we're pretty much... Now, back in these streets are many, many, many more embassies. But uh, it's kind of a big hike to get around them. They're not like in one row. There's a couple right up here. And then we're going to head off, head off to the White House. This is a former Soviet uh, state. Now they do not like the Russians. In fact, this is the most digital uh, government in the world, I think. No, no, someone else. This is someone else. Oh, this is blue, black, and blue, black, and white. Blue, black, and white. That is, it's the most digital nation on earth. They suffered a crippling cyber attack about ten years ago. That's still written about today. First letter is a vowel. Remember the EU? Yeah, all those famous places are gone. Light blue, dark black, and white starts with a vowel. Former Soviet state. Attack digitally. You can become a cyber resident of this state if you want by filling out some forms. Estonia. That was Estonia, guys. Okay, so here we've got a red and then a white and then a blue. It is a member of the EU. Red, white, and blue. Do you ever see that movie, A Knight's Tale, with the... Uh, I don't know where Cuba not France. It, it, it's, it's a lighter blue than France, yeah? Sir Baron von Luxembourg. Is it Luxembourg or Liechtenstein? I thought it was Liechtenstein, but it might be Luxembourg. All right, we got to look. It is Luxembourg. Luxembourg. Good call. I was going to say Liechtenstein, but they have a different flag. All right. So down here, I think we have one more embassy. Yeah, I think there's one more down here. Yeah, you know, there's actually are a couple of flag stores in D.C. Because, like, like a, a trade association will be like, we're hosting the deputy prime minister of Malawi in a speech. And guess what? They need a Malawian flag to put up at the table. So, you know, there are flag stores in D.C. that can pretty much give you any type of flag you need. You need a flag to go on your car because you're a diplomat and you want to look all you're pretentious or you need a flag to go behind a stadium or something. So yeah. I'll cut over this way. Oh shoot. There used to be a really good map store in DC too. And you could go and buy these amazing maps from like the Defense Mapping Agency. And, uh, they would be like super cool. Now that is not an embassy over there. That is a society. The Society of Cincinnati. Um, how long have I been here? It's kind of tricky. I'll tell you in a second. Now the Society of Cincinnati is by ancestry only. The people who are members of the Society of Cincinnati are descendants of Revolutionary War military officers. And it is to uphold the principles of the revolution. So that's basically like the Daughters of American Revolution, the Society of Cincinnati. Now, over here, good at cricket, orange, white, green, 
spirally thing in the middle. Really good at cricket. Better at tandoori. Better at papadons. All right. Famous for this guy who used to walk around in a bed sheet. Ireland, no. We went to Ireland earlier. We saw that. He got the free Guinness. An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Come on, guys. You see the flag. India. Yeah, angel for good. You're doing... God, you're doing good. You're doing good on these things. That is the Embassy of India. Yes. You love the architecture in D.C. Wow. Okay, so for those guys, I lived in D.C. I moved in D.C. in 1987. I moved to Washington, D.C. I lived here for, oh, God, 20, 25, 23 years or something like that, on and off. I took one away for law school and some other things. But I've always so I've basically been a D.C. resident for the last 20-some years. Then I moved to Hong Kong for 10 years or 9 years. And now I've just moved back. I've been back for about a year. So... Wow, what is that? This looks like the Pepsi-Cola flag. Okay, so we've got... I don't know where Yemen's embassy is. So this is a red with white underneath. Red bar and a white bar. I lived in Charleston, Illinois. It's close to Mattoon, but yeah, Charleston. Asian country. One of the most populous countries in Asia one of the uh, most populous Muslim nations in the world. Jakarta, really spicy food. Poland, good guess. You know, at first glance, I would have said Poland if that had been an EU flag. Not Thailand, red and white. Come on, guys. It's an Asian nation, lots of Muslims, uh, kind of some islands. Jakarta is the capital, I think. There's a koala up for Give up. There you go. Costa got it. Indonesia. Indonesia. Philippines we saw earlier today. Another EU nation. We've got a, oh yes, Cristiano Ronaldo. We've got green, we've got red. We've got the Euro 2016 champions. And they've got Cristiano Ronaldo. You guys all know this place. There you go, Hobbs has got it. Portugal, how's it, hey Morocco, how's it going? And I'm sorry to say, we have now basically left Embassy Row. There are many, many more embassies off to my left, mixed into a residential neighborhood. But we want to go to the White House. And the White House is about five or six blocks down this street. So we're going to continue on to the White House now. And that was our game of Guess the Flags for today. We'll have to do that again. You guys, that was a lot of fun. So this is DuPont Circle. Um, this was known 20 years ago as a predominantly homosexual neighborhood. And uh, it's where they gentrified this neighborhood. Now it's very, very trendy. Yeah, I guess I have to study the video and like remember all the flags. I can't even remember all the countries. And I walk by it like every other day, yeah? You would think I would know them. <clears throat> this is a great used bookstore. It's been around for like 40 years. Second story books. Does DC have a skid row? Yeah, yeah, it does. The whole city. <laughs> I mean, they're homeless everywhere. In fact, there's a bunch of homeless in this park. There's probably some guy on opium in this park. Um, and there are neighborhoods of DC that are worse than other neighborhoods. But homelessness and addiction are plagues all over the city. In fact, right around this corner, I bet there's a beggar, yeah. There always is. Now, those things are kind of everywhere. Now, the violence, the most violent parts, they're farther out in the north and east and southeast areas. 
the violence is kind of far away from that. Doesn't mean the violence doesn't come to this part of the city. There's violence everywhere, but the places where there's a murder every every couple weeks, those are far away from this area. This is pretty safe, relatively speaking. Of course, nothing is safe compared to, say, Hong Kong, you know, where there's barely any murders. Of course, there the police beat you up in the triads. Krispy Kremes. Where's the White House? It is just down the street. It's Japan. Japan is incredibly safe. Japan is leave your wallet on the street and somebody will find you and give it back to you safe. musical interlude. Back to the addiction problem. So, yes, I have seen overdoses on the street. Something I'm not really used to. My kids can't understand homelessness uh, because they've been brought up in a ridiculous place where everyone had money. They're just like, well, Daddy, why don't these people buy a house? I'm like, well, they don't have any money. Well, well why don't they have any money? Why can't they buy a house? Because they have, you know, issues and problems. They just, they, they just were just taken aback. They're like, then why are they sitting on the street? Why don't they go to a real estate agent and ask them for a house? <laughs> you know, it's just kind of crazy. Not only was it just the innocence of kids, but it was also sort of the obliviousness of living in a pampered life yeah, scooters are everywhere. The pampered life of Hong Kong. They just couldn't quite get the whole thing. They just they just didn't quite understand it, you know. Does Hong Kong have an addiction problem out in public? Um, no, it's not in public per se. It's nothing, nothing at all like you see here. We don't really... Hong Kong only has about 2,000 homeless people, uh, according to all estimates. That's for 7.5 million people. The reason is that there's a lot of substandard housing they can still live in, divided houses, where, you know, for 200 US dollars, they can live in like a room or something like that, or a shanty or whatever. Or they live with cousins or uncles, and they're all crammed on top of each other. But street living, living on the street, is very rare in Hong Kong. In fact, I didn't see much of it unless I went to certain areas. I and mean, it was actually kind of hard to spot. And there weren't like addicts on the street. Now they do have a drug problem. One of the big drugs is ketamine. A lot of the teenagers do ketamine, which is a horse tranquilizer. Hey, how's it going? And of course, a lot of the bankers do, uh, do Tylenol. They think it's cocaine. Their dealer told them it was the best stuff but in reality, it's just chopped up Tylenol mixed with baking powder. Uh, oh, you're in Japan, cool. Yeah, Hong Kong, Gothia Cup was good. Uh, I spent a lot of fun time in Gothenburg. I was in Scandinavia. I was in uh, Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. You're in Japan, cool. I was in Japan a, a year ago. Your websites make $6,000 a month. That would be a pay cut for me. Hong Kong scares people. Hong Kong is kind of like, you know, I always say that, like, Singapore is like Disney and uh, Hong Kong is like a county fair. <laughs> what about New York? 
Uh, I haven't been up to New York since Christmas. The thing that struck me about New York most recently was how expensive everything was. You know, it's like $45 to go to the Empire State Building. $45 to go to the top of the Empire State Building. I mean, come on. Where do I go in Japan? I, we usually, we would, we will stop in Tokyo whenever we fly through Japan. But our friends have a ski house in Yazawa, uh, at Chiyogo Yazawa. So we'll go up there and go skiing uh, sometimes. Or go out in the summer and have like a My Neighbor Totoro experience out in the rice fields uh, of rural Japan. Yeah. 25 bucks. That's the one thing that struck me. So I've been gone from the United States for basically nine years. And then I came back. And the thing that sort of struck me is how everything is priced to the maximum pain level possible. That maximum point where you're like, oh, all right, we're only here once, I'll buy it. You know? No, there's no bargains anymore. Yeah? The only bargain I found in New York was the New York Public Library. It was free and it was beautiful. And you got to go down, and you could see the original Winnie the Pooh. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Oh, wow, check this out. It's like butterflies here. You want to help homeless people. It's tricky. You know, there's an interesting, uh, there's an interesting YouTube video called uh, Seattle is Dying. And it's about the homelessness problem that's afflicted in Seattle. And, and they talk about, and it's, it really, the problem is, it, is a lot of these people, it's mental health and addiction you know if you could get the resources to take care of the people with mental health issues and addiction issues then you could focus on those who actually have a problem you know buying a house the working poor and stuff like that but uh there was just so much stuff i'm in washington dc not washington state but it's a very interesting riddle called seattle is dying and it's it's worth it, it opened up a lot of controversy in Seattle, but it's, it's something that you could talk about San Francisco, New York, Washington. The same issues are going on, uh, especially San Francisco, which is just, just a disaster right now. I mean, you may have heard about all the human feces they're finding on the street in San Francisco. Lamp posts have fallen over in San Francisco because they've been rusted by urine. I mean, it's just, come on. You know, it's just ridiculous. This is gross. Yeah, it's oh, it's just ridiculous. And this this was this was about Seattle, but a lot of the things they were talking about in Seattle are going on in San Francisco. It's in, you know even more numbers. I tell the story. A friend of mine, who is a very very left wing, Obama supporter, very progressive, he moved to San Francisco, and he said after three months he found himself saying to people, "Get a job." <laughs> you, know, that, you know, these people that came up to me, he was just like, get a job. And I'm like, well, dude, 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 you're like this progressive, you know, love everybody, do all this. Like, yeah, but I'm, I'm fed up with it. I'm fed up with it. <laughs> just like, yeah, I was like, San Francisco turning even the left wing into conservatives. <laughs> You're moving to Anaheim. I don't know anything about it. I've been to Anaheim once. I went there for a football game when the Los Angeles Rams still played in Anaheim. God, that was a long time ago. You know what's funny is, um, you know where there's actually a, a kind of a homeless problem? Thailand. Homeless expats. So Thailand is tricky. Needles everywhere, yeah. So here's the thing. Everybody, so you get all these like let's say you get these 50 year old retired plumbers from england yeah they've made a pretty good enough let's say they got like a half a million pounds a half a million dollars us they moved to thailand because you know you can live for like a hundred bucks a month you know it's super cheap and there's like tons of women and there's beer and they're partying so you get all these guys moved to Eng over to thailand and then a combination of women and alcohol and a bit of fraud and boom they're, they're they're destitute they're bankrupt and they're living on the streets of thailand it's estimated there's about a probably 200 foreign homeless living in bangkok because they uh basically just drank their way into bankruptcy they did you know now thailand has tricky rules 
a foreigner cannot own property in Thailand. So many of them would marry a local Thai girl and she'd be like, well, put the house in my name, darling. I'll have the house and then we can live there. And then they do that and boom. Oh, by the way, I don't like you. We're getting divorced. I'm keeping the house. <laughs> yeah, that's happened a lot. So you get a lot of guys who've gone over there and uh, fallen victim to this, that, and another. Don't know much about Tallahassee. Isn't that where Florida State is, right? <laughs> yeah, I hope there's no fresh poop. I would have stepped in it. So a friend of mine used to be the JAG officer on an aircraft carrier. JAG is the Judge Advocate General. They're basically the lawyers on an aircraft carrier who handle all the little petty disputes, legal matters for the sailors, and any you know discipline cases that come up. And he was telling me, he's like, oh, this was 20 years ago. He's like, oh, we've got to go to Subic Bay next week or next month. I said, well, what's wrong with Subic Bay? He says, it's the busiest time of the year for a JAG officer. And I said, well, what's a JAG officer got to do? Do you have a lot of fights in the PARs or something? He's like, no, 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 no. He said, my assigned mission from the captain, from the admiral of the fleet, is to try and prevent as many sailors as possible from getting married to Filipino bar girls. And I'm like, what? He says, so many of our sailors will marry some gal they met in a bar who did things to them that they only read about in Hustler and are convinced that it's true love. And my job is to convince them that no, you don't want to marry this girl, take her back to Pig's Knuckle, Arkansas, and try to support her by driving a semi-tractor trailer the rest of your life. All right, so his job as a JAG officer was to stop these barroom marriages, of which 85% ended in divorce. I was just like, wow. And I bet you went to law school thinking you were gonna defend the innocent. He's like, yep, my job now is to keep guys from getting married. <laughs> Interesting enough, though, at Subic Bay, there was a place called Filipino Bride School run by the U.S. Morale, Welfare, and Recreation Office of the U.S. Military. It was a standard American uh, one-story house, and the place was designed like any other American suburban house. And its mission was to teach these Filipino girls who are marrying American soldiers how to live an American lifestyle. This is a thermostat. If you're too hot, you turn this down. If you're too cold, you turn this up. This is the water, this is the heater, this is how you make a budget, this is how you run a garbage disposal. Because they found so many men who married Vietnamese women after the war, the Vietnamese came back and were totally unprepared for living in America. When it was hot, they would boil water. They boiled so much water that the roofs caved in, <laughs> the ceiling caved in in the housing. So, uh, you know, it was kind of a funny thing. My occupation is I do a lot of technology uh, consulting for different organizations and individuals. So I'm kind of available on call whenever they need something, wherever. If you marry an American, you can stay in the United States, yes. There are two ways to get in. First, you can marry an American overseas and come back as their bride. Or you can apply for a visa to come to the United States to, Ameri to marry your husband within 90 days. So there's two different types of visa. Each, I think one is a little bit faster than the other. And it also kind of depends what your plans are. Are you going to get married right away or whatever? How do I get paid? I get paid by the job. Uh, I've walked through here a few times. I haven't walked over here in a while, though. I usually come a different direction. But we're almost at the White House. Block away. This is Connecticut Avenue Northwest. And we are one block from the White House. We're coming up on Lafayette Park that park that faces the White House. Now, actually, it's going to be kind of funny. You guys are going to see the White House. You're going to say, oh my God, it's the White House. And I'm going to actually have to say to you, no, this is actually the back of the White House. The White House was designed by a Scottish architect and his Scottish architectural tradition. The front of the house faces the water. Ergo, the front of the White House faces the Potomac. You guys see the front of the White House whenever the helicopter lands. Now, when the president meets somebody from their limousines, they usually meet them at the back of the White House. And that's where the entrance to his office is and everything like that. 
that's the Stephen Decatur house. That was owned by Stephen Decatur, the American sailor who sailed into Philippines. Okay, can I, I'll give you the exact street. We're the 1600 block of H Street Northwest. 1600 block H Street Northwest. I'm looking at a statue of Baron von Steven right now. He knew that. <laughs> Maybe I told you. We're gonna jaywalk in front of a bunch of cops. Because I'm just that kind of guy. We're worried about the biker. So this is Lafayette Park. For Lafayette who helped in the Revolutionary War, but also all the other foreign soldiers who helped us. Von William von Steven helped train our troops. Oh my god. They've started the renovations of the fence. Huh. So this is what happens when you go away for three weeks and come back. They put up a giant fence around the fence. So, um, the White House has a fence around it. It's about six to eight feet high. And they have petitioned, and I think they just didn't give an approval, to put in a new fence that's 12 feet high. They're having problems with people jumping over the fence. So I think, not sure, but I think that's what this construction hoarding is on. Yeah, they built the wall. They did, they built the wall, build the wall, they built the wall around the White House. We still should be able to see some of it. The other thing they changed is when I arrived at Dulles Airport, you have to pay for your luggage trolley. Now, in the past, when you arrived international, luggage trolleys were free because everybody has a ton of luggage. But now, cheap bastards that they are, they charge you five bucks for a luggage trolley. Just, you know, it's just scuzzy. Every other country in the world, airports are like, yeah, I just have a free trolley when you arrive. But nope, nope, not, not America. Got a nickel and dime, the guys. There we go. Yeah, see, anything for a few little dollars pissed me off. My kid, so my kids are in the airport yesterday, and all they could say, you know, we're going through everything, they're like, Dad, why did you bring us to a third world country? Why are we in this place? This is such a third world airport. You have 40,000. Oh, that's interesting. I probably have more than that. I don't know how much I have in the bank right now, to be honest. Oh, look, there's snipers up on the roof. Do 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 do. Okay, so Secret Service snipers up on the roof. Why do I hate Trump? I don't hate Trump. I don't hate anybody except hot helicopter over there. Interesting. Hey, how's it going? So we're at the White House. Whee! It's the White House, and they're building a new fence. I think they're building a new fence. I think that's why. No. Yeah, they are replacing the fence. So the new fence will be taller. Probably put us farther away from the White House itself. So every so often, some idiot tries to climb the fence and goes and visit the president. Oh, I got Google Maps. Cool. So we're at Lafayette Park. We're in front of the back of the White House. And this over here is the executive office building. Everybody who works in the White House actually works in that building. They don't really work in that, but there's only like 14 offices in the White House itself. Yeah, it's gonna be a really tall fence. I think I read it's gonna be 12 feet. It's gonna look almost exactly the same as the old fence. It's gonna be the same kind of metal, spiky things. But uh, now the West Wing, the Oval Office, is through these gates here. Back there is the Oval Office, the press briefing room, the Roosevelt Room. Fascinating. You would have thought they could just pull the old wall out and slip in some new, new poles. But I guess, I guess not. I guess they want to, like, make a big to-do about it. doing work on the Blair House, too. Everything's under construction today. Now, this building on the right over here with the American flag, 
Hi, I'm at the White House. The White House is back behind this fence. It's, uh, they're repairing the fence at the White House. So, you can't see much. It's back there, though. All right, we'll go around the other side, yeah? You guys want to go around the other side of the White House? We'll go around the other side of the White House. I'll show you the back view. So this is Blair House over here. That is the f official guest residence of the White House. So when a foreign head of state visits, they're allowed to stay in this building across the street from the president. President Truman stayed there when they were renovating the White House. Now this is the executive office building, the Eisenhower executive office building. This is where all the staff works. So if you write a letter to the president, guys in this building, actually down in that corner over there, they're the guys who answer the letter. If you uh, want the, you know, some university football team to meet the president, the guys in that office set it up. His security staff is in there, his military staff is in there. And then also that orange building over there, the new executive office building, that big one back there. That's where most of the Secret Service agents are. Underneath us is a big parking garage filled with limousines and war wagons, as we call them. War wagons are Suburbans and Tahoes kitted out with bulletproof glass and run flat tires. What's the chance of him ever seeing the letter? Um, it depends. He gets millions of letters, okay? Millions. But a well-thought-out personal letter, often handwritten, that is really whatever, you know, he might see. The president reads real letters. I mean, Reagan read real letters. Famous story, one guy wrote to Reagan, said, I'm, you know, 75 years old and I'm getting married for the first time, but I can't afford a tuxedo. And Reagan sent him a suit. Reagan actually sent the guy one of his old suits so that he had a suit to get married. You know, so they have a collection of private mail that gets to them pretty much every week. Most every member of Congress I worked with uh, will read private mail occasionally. And it's up to the staff to pull out letters they think are important or worthwhile or reflect the sentiment or tone of a, a certain debate. So like when I worked for a congressman, we of course would push through any letters from a governor or uh, a media person or something like that. He doesn't want to read. Um, but they're shown letters, let's put it that way. Reads is different from shown. They are shown letters every day. Whether they read them, I think of the line from uh, the line from A Fish Called Wando. Apes don't read philosophy. Yes, they do, Otto. They just don't understand it. <laughs> but uh, President Bush was famous, the older Bush, famous for writing back handwritten replies to personal letters. He received lots of them. Now here are people going for official visits. Uh, this could be like a college tour group going to a, a thing. Sometimes they have these uh, briefings, basically. Best of the dress, well, Mr. President's his official title. Here comes some more wagons here, actually. So see the glass, see how polarized the glass is? That's bulletproof. There they go. So those are war wagons. That's a cabinet secretary. So. That was a four-car convoy. That's probably a Secretary of State or Secretary of Defense. They travel in little convoys like that. You can see the guys sticking their heads out the window, scoping me out. Scroll up. How can you work for a congressman or a congresswoman? Oh, it's actually quite easy. If someone was asking that question, you, uh, you just write them a letter. You apply. Um, there's a newspaper called Roll Call. And there's another newspaper called The Hill, and they both put ads like, I need someone to answer my mail. I need someone to do social work for me. I need someone to be my scheduler. Um, it's usually best to have some political experience 
or some sort of customer service type experience. They like people who have actually dealt with people before because that's a lot of what you do as a congressman is you answer the phone and you take care of all sorts of crazy ass things. But uh, working for a congressman is not that difficult. It is pretty, pretty not very rewarding. <laughs> you don't make a lot of money, uh, but it's not, it's not impossible. I think there are, oh God, I don't remember, 20 or 30,000 people working for the US Congress. Where am I now? I am at the corner of 17th and E. 17th and E, I'm in front of the International, the American Red Cross headquarters. 17th and E Street Northwest. And we're gonna cut across this, which, this road, which I don't think it has a name anymore because it used to be known as E Street or South Executive Avenue, but then they closed it after the Oklahoma City bombings. They closed it, so now you can't really drive here anymore. You used to be able to drive here. We're gonna go to the back of the White House now. It's my so you saw that little motorcade with a cabinet secretary going out. That was a four-car motorcade, yeah? Dick Cheney, when he was the Secretary of Defense, in the middle of Operation Desert Storm, he used to drive to the White, he used to drive to the Defense Department in his Toyota. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Cheney was like, I don't need a stupid limo cade. Yeah. Would I ever work for the President of the United States? If I if they said, you know, we need you. I mean, they really needed me. Well, yeah, I would. I mean, it's the office. I would work for the office. You know, uh, don't know the man. Famous scene, you know, you ever watch the series The West Wing? There was a scene where a Republican took a job for the president, even though they disagreed. And the reason was because the office asked, you know, the office of president, the most powerful person in the country, and asked you to help out the United States by working for him. You just kind of have to say, yeah. Yeah, that's a running joke. Washington is Hollywood for ugly people. But I will say there are plenty of pretty people here. And that's the Washington Monument you see off in the distance. We're coming over to the south side of the White House. The front side, technically. So when you guys see the president's helicopter come in, it usually curls around the Washington Monument and it flies directly over this, the, what is known as the ellipse. This is where the White House Christmas tree is. One helicopter came in a little bit too low one day and chopped off the top of the Christmas tree. That's why the top of it is all flat. You can see right over there, that's where the helicopter blades took out the White House Christmas tree. I'm making that part up, but I think it's a cool story. That is the official White House Christmas tree. Uh, I'm paralleling Constitution Avenue, which is right over there. No, nope. always hiring. Honestly, getting a job at the White House or the Congress is not that much like, a, like getting a job anywhere else. Oh, speaking of the White House. And we're here. It took weeks. It can take a while. This is the front of the White House. Well, most people would probably think it's the back, but it's actually the front. And it's looking towards the Potomac. And guys, my battery's about dead. So I tell you what, we're just gonna call it right here. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, diplomatic flag hunt that we did today and this trip to the White House. I'm now gonna, I did walk around the White House. I'm now gonna walk back to my house, which is a lot of it. Oh, while you're out, my email is not working. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. We're gonna sign off now and we'll catch you again later. Bye-bye.